so basically in this video we'll be discussing about the design of beam in shear and uh, basically a beam is subjected to a predominant bending but it may also be subjected to shear axial force or tension okay and bending is a factor that is associated to a shear as we know because uh with the shear bending also occurs in the section hence rc section should be strong enough to resist the limit state of collapse in shear now shear stress in beam basically the very first i will discuss about is nominal shear stress so that is for a beam of uniform depth shear stress tau v is calculated as v by bd where v is the maximum force shear force due to load and b and d are the dimension of beam now what if the beam is of varying depth then it is shear stress is equal to vu plus minus mu by d tan beta by bd so let us draw a section of varying depth for a beam such that the depth is decreasing towards the free end from support and another case that is the depth increases towards the free end from the support now this can be considered as a cantilever case so when a load p acts upon the free end moment is induced so that is we will be considering so let us here take beta that is the angle between top and the bottom edge so you can see here beta is this and we might get confused with this sign so basically we have to understand mu is the moment in the support or at any section so in this case the depth decreases towards the support but moment will be maximum at support for a cantilever case similarly depth increases and numerically the moment also increases mark the word numerically okay and negative if depth increases and bending moment increases numerically now design of shear capacity it is the capacity of the section for which it can carry the shear without any shear bar that is the shear in the beam will be resisted by the concrete itself so it is represented as tau c and tau c is a function of ast by bd percentage and grade of concrete see this in this table so the value of shear strength of concrete is calculated with respect to ast bd 100% and grade of concrete so now another is maximum shear stress that is tau max and it is also calculated from the is code according to the grade now design of shear that is whether a uh, shear reinforcement has to be provided or not so there are three cases if tau c is greater than tau v that is design shear capacity is greater than the nominal shear strength then no need for design of shear because the shear will be resisted by the concrete without any shear bar so provide nominal shear and second case if tau c is less than tau v and tau v is less than tau max then shear reinforcement is necessary so the maximum or the nominal shear capacity is greater than that of the design shear capacity design shear stress that is v u s is equal to tau v minus tau c into b d because for a shear strength or for a shear stress up to tau c there is no requirement of any shear bar but for value greater than that of tau c reinforcement will be necessary so tau v minus tau c and this gives us the design shear force
and for this vertical stirrups are provided that is shear reinforcement are provided in the form of vertical stirrups and the strength of these vertical stirrups we can find in the code that is v v s is equal to 0.87 fy a s v d divided by s v so design shear force will be carried by the vertical stirrups so v v s is equal to the design shear stress that we have calculated above now from this equation we will find the spacing of this stirrup so s v is equal to 0.87 fy a s v d by v v s and what is ASV then? So this is the area of shear reinforcement that stirrups. Okay. So this is the stirrup. Okay. And four bars are provided. And when a load, these stirrups are provided perpendicular to the longitudinal reinforcement, and the force will be acting perpendicular to the beam. So the shear, that is the shear force, will act perpendicular to the direction of beam, and this force will be carried on these two legs okay the stirrup will have four sides but the load will be carried by two legs as i have already shown here so two legged stirrup now in case of closely spaced more than four bars in this case you can see that extra stirrup is provided and this stirrup also contribute in carrying the load or shear so four leg stirrup because four legs are contributing now third is tau c is less than tau v but tau v is greater than tau max so the nominal shear strength becomes maximum than that of the permissible value so we have to redesign the section so what does redesigning the section means so we have to alter the depth okay that is depth of beam has to be analyzed So what is this or what does this analyzing of depth means? So we can see that tau v is a function of b and d inversely. So decrease in the value of depth increases shear stress and if we decrease or if we increase the depth or we can say width of the beam shear stress decreases. So that is the case we are now for the spacing sv okay this shear reinforcement spacing should be minimum of the following three values okay you can find this in the code also so sv should be less than or equal to 0.87 fy asv divided by 0.4v or less than equal to 0.75d or less or equal to 300 mm so whichever is appropriate and this can be found in page 48 26.5.1.6 clause so you can see here also and basically i'm interested with the first case that is 0.87 fy asv so you can see here this is the relation and for the bar okay for the shear reinforcement you should not provide steel with ill distress greater than 415 that is only up to 415 we can provide now for shear reinforcement this is the uh, general representation of stirrup in the beam and we can also see here bent up bar and sv is the spacing stirrup okay in this stirrup and we have to note that the reinforcement in the compression zone does not contribute in shear resistance okay only the tension bar contribute in shear resistance now let us draw the reinforcement detailing so this is the horizontal or longitudinal reinforcement and considering these are the vertical stirrups provided now for vertical stirrups and we can see a four number of bars this is general idealization okay so 
particle steel of VSV is equal to 0 0.87 Fy ASV D divided by SV that is spacing and we also have another type of shear reinforcement that is inclined bent up bar. The bar that runs longitudinally may be provided with bent up like this at some angle and this also contributes in shear resistance uh, with angle beta or alpha you can say. Now for the shear strength of the bent up bar 0 0.87 Fy ASV sin alpha that is alpha is the angle of inclination of bent up. Now at a distance L the bent up is provided from the support. So what is the value of L then? So for the length of bent up from support it is taken as D1 plus cot alpha and generally alpha is taken as 45 degree. Similarly we have another type of shear reinforcement that is the inclined stirrups and for this the shear strength is calculated as shown in this code okay now these are the reinforcement and this is the bent up uh, inclined stirrup okay that i have was talking about previously asv in all relations so what actually asv is then as i have already said this is the area of the shear reinforcement but what is the numerical value so it is area of the reinforcement so pi into d square that is the diameter of the stirrup by 4 but it has to consider the number of legs okay so that is if it is two legs then it is provided as two so and for inclined bent up bar okay it is different because inclined bent up bar contributes itself for the shear resistance so we have to consider the area of steel of bent up bar so as we have provided two bent up bar for this case only it may be three four anyway but now for i'm taking two that is number of bent up bar so i'm providing two into pi into d bar okay that will be the size of longitudinal bar the section is divided into number of section okay from support up to the start of bent up it is considered as section one then section two and section three respectively and designing of this section are done respectively so for section one shear is resisted by the vertical stirrups only okay so close spacing so close spacing than at other section you will find that the spacing uh, in the section one will be much less than that of the spacing at other section and similarly for section two you can find from code also that the bent up bar if provided shear resistance is half among bar and vertical stirrup so shear is resisted as a half value among bent up bar and vertical stirrup at that section so now let us draw the section again so providing an, uh, n number of bars and now let us draw the detailing and this is the longitudinal bar so completing this as a whole section okay this is the whole section or span of the beam then the shear at the support is maximum and which reduces to a value zero to mid span okay so the shear at midpoint is zero and again it goes to maximum value at other side and we design for the half portion and provide similar reinforcement to other half this is the general designing so this is the bent up bar as i have already said and the same thing will be provided on the other section that is half section other half section and for the section or by the point when bent up starts the shear at that section will be different is it and the length is called d1 plus cot alpha so this length being x we can find the value of v u b for that is here at bent up bar by using similar triangle properties okay so this is the basic idea
for designing we will be designing as section 1 section 2 and section 3 and at the mid span as the code says the maximum spacing is 300 mm so we will check whether it is feasible to provide 300 mm center to center spacing or not because if we provide 300 mm spacing it becomes more economical so also at mid span greater spacing that is 300 mm center to center can be provided okay 